Chief Simen, which we do every month. Uh, it is my honor and privilege to welcome Mr. Devendra Prabhu Desai, an Indian biographer and manager of media relations and corporate affairs for PCCI in Mumbai. That's, that's the past. That's the past? Oh, that's the right up they gave me. Oh. His biography of Sachin Tendulkar is a welcome addition to the long list of books on the Master Blaster. Uh, plus, you have written many other books on various other editors. Uh, to be in conversation with him, we have Mr. Rajan Mukherjee, former Bengal cricketer and author. All this is easy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Uh, to be honest with you, I think I should not be speaking much. It's his day, the author's day, the author will take over. But initially, to be honest with you, I think I need to explain a few things about the author and the subject as well. As for the obvious concern, I think Devendra, you've done a very, very difficult job. Let's shake hands on it. Because the living legend that such a man is, he has been documented so very well over the last three decades. I really doubt if anybody can add anything to it, to be honest with you. <laughs> but to be honest, if you go through the book, you'll find he has done a terrific job of it. He's really done his homework. Began Mumbai and he's been there, he's seen Indian cricket right to the heart of the center because he was part of BCCI, they will run. So he has seen Indian cricket right at the, from the heart and he's seen the cricketers as well. What I like about the book basically is, you know, he has gone and such a is established, everybody would do a gaga over naturally. But what David did is he went right on his early days. Early days would be people who were part and parcel of such his early career. I really appreciate the way you mentioned Sarat Kotnis. Sarat is one of those journalists, you know, who would write about the youngsters only, you know. When we were covering test matches, Sarat would not only really, you know, write about the test match as such, but he would make it a point to highlight how she matches, etc. Why do the test matches? And hats off to these people. Because these are the people who highlighted men like Sachin Tendulkar, Vinod Kamdi, and of course the others. The Bombay, as you know, whole you know, parade of stars over the years. And this is what I like about David. Like, he really managed to write about these people. So another person I quite appreciated was mentioning Kailaj Dittar. Because Sachin Tendulkar's first trip to England was in 1988 as part of a India under 19 unofficial team, which was happening by a gentleman called Kailash Vitani. Kailash happened to be an all rounder with Rajasthan and Sanju Zok. And he was taken the best of under 19 traders from all over India. Uh, <clears throat> I happened to be one of the selectors, kind of thing, from his zone to help him out. Anyway, the idea is such a first tour was with Kailash Vitani. Very few people would know about it. And thanks to you, they mentioned it by name. So this is what I want to mention was, this particular gentleman has done a wonderful homework. He has really gone deep into it. And if you go through the book, I think you'll appreciate that. And regarding Sachin the man, I think, or would you like to say something first? And shall I say something about Sachin later on? Yeah, I would like to say that, you know, I would like to thank uh, the Prabha Ketan Foundation for joining me. And I would like to thank all of you for coming here today. Uh, I, just, I would just like to say that, uh, there is no uh, dearth of cricket lovers in our country as you are all aware. But it's only a few people like me who get lucky and who get the opportunity to uh, do the next best thing to play cricket which is to uh, write on cricket and uh, interact with those uh, who play the game and those who run it. And uh, I consider myself very lucky to have uh, not only got the opportunity to write biographies of some of our greatest cricketers like Rahul Dravid, Mr. Gavaskar and then uh, Sachin. Uh, but I was also, I also got the opportunity to work in the institution that uh, runs Indian cricket. And I was there for seven and a half years. And uh, I, just, I just consider myself very fortunate to have got these chances and uh, to, have, uh, to, have a, to have a publishing house like Rupa giving me the opportunity to write as many as six books in all. And, uh, the book on Sachin uh, was probably the most uh, personal book that I wrote because uh, generally when you when you follow a particular cricketer, it is usually you, you read about him 
in the newspapers, you know, or if you are really into cricket, if you are following cricket, you first read about that cricketer in the papers, uh, his exploits in domestic cricket. But uh, being a Mumbai car, you know, Sachin is different because I was following his his cricketing exploits from the time not only me but even he was in school because uh, it was in school that he and Vinod Kamli created his dream with that famous uh, partnership of 664 in an inter-school match and uh, all those of us in Mumbai we are part of what is called as the Mumbai cricketing grapevine so the word spreads quickly you know, across the medans, in the restaurants the umpires, the scorers, the onlookers there's this grapevine, the news spreads so all those of us in Mumbai who followed cricket were aware of this boy called Sachin Tendulkar from the time he was a schoolboy and just a few months after that partnership I mean that partnership was not in that particular season he averaged uh, more than a thousand in school cricket and uh, there's a very interesting story uh, which I have uh, used in the book in fact uh, which uh, about, about this particular journalist from uh, Kolkata one of the uh, senior most cricketing journalists from this city Gautam Bhattacharya who had a long association with AVP uh, he actually uh, did this story about this boy called Sachin Tendulkar averaging I think it was 1025 that was his average because he had not got out just got out once and uh, the sub-editor to whom Mr. Bhattacharya gave that story thought that Mr. Bhattacharya had goofed up because how could anyone possibly average 1025 so as uh, uh, you had that situation in the 1976 Montreal Olympics where uh, the, the scorecard did not have that, that digital scorecard did not have room for four digits and so Nadia's performance was recorded as one. Similarly, the sub-editor thought that it, it's probably 125, it cannot be 1025, and he left out that zero. So again, uh, I thought that was quite an extraordinary coincidence. You know, two teenage prodigies, different sports, different countries, different generations, but you had this extraordinary coincidence. So Sachin was someone that I have been following from the time he was a school boy. So when he made his Ranji Trophy debut at the age of 15. Possibly the, the rest of the country was surprised, but we in Mumbai were not surprised. As far as we were concerned, uh, it was only a matter of time before the inevitable happened. But uh, I remember being uh, slightly uh, apprehensive when he was picked to go to Pakistan in the Indian team uh, at the age of 16. I was in the ninth standard then, and there was a lot of apprehension, you know, 16 year old boy, what will happen? Uh, but then, of course, what he achieved there, particularly in the last test of the series when India were 38 for 4 and in trouble and he was hit on the nose by Vakar Yunus, uh, the nose was bleeding and the Pakistani fielders were very, uh, uh, in what was a display of gamesmanship, politely suggesting to him that I think you need to go off the field, you know, you're, you're injured, you're bleeding, take a break and he refused to leave the field and the very next ball he hit for a boundary so after that it was the rest was history so uh, with Sachin it has been a, a personal journey because uh, my generation has grown up with Sachin uh, we talk about the, the 90s being the decade of Sachin Tendulkar uh, the 90s was a special decade for the country of India because you had liberalization coming in you had satellite television coming in you had the mindsets changing, attitudes changing. Uh, in 1994, you had a situation where two girls won beauty pageants. One, uh, one of them won this universe, one of them won this world. So, Sachin was leading this, this extraordinary transformation of the country. And that is what I have, I've, I've done my best to bring out in terms of the book. Because Sachin Tendulkar is, he cannot be looked at in isolation. When, when you tell the story of Sachin Tendulkar, you have to tell the story of the people uh, who inspired him, the people who guided him, the people whom he played with and against, and also his contemporaries from, from other fields. Um, so I, like many people, grew up with Sachin, and that is why uh, Sachin was, uh, this book Hero, the biography of Sachin Tendulkar, uh, is probably the most personal of the books that I have written so far. Would you like to mention something about his very early days, you know? 
you know, break into the Indian desk scheme or the atmosphere or the dressing room particularly? Yes, uh, as I said a little while back, uh, surely I wasn't the only person apprehensive when he was picked uh, to go to Pakistan because Pakistan at that time was the second best team in the world after the West Indies. Uh, it's, it's a little difficult to believe for today's generation that the West Indies used to be, of course, and that's a tragedy, but in the 1980s, the West Indies were an invincible force. There, uh, I think they, uh, they, they were halted only once on 25th June 1983. But uh, apart from that, they were invincible. And Pakistan came second, and you had all these uh, heavyweights, you know, Imran, Javed Miyada, Wasim Akram, there was a lot of talk about this young fast bowler called Vakarios playing at home and uh, what would happen to the Indian team because we had just had a uh, disastrous tour of the West Indies. We had lost all the test matches over there. We had a new captain in Shrikant. So there was a lot of apprehension. And at that stage, of, and another very interesting fact about that particular time was sir, you will remember that the relationship between the players and the BCCI had hit rock bottom. There were contractual issues and uh, the players and the board couldn't agree on anything. And there was even talk of a second string team touring Pakistan if the, if the players did not agree to the terms uh, set by the board. But then the board had the last word and the players then decided to go to Pakistan for free. They made that decision you will play for free because you know we don't want our commitment to the country to be questioned. So it was a very uh, tumultuous uh, time when the Indian team went to Pakistan. And at that stage, of course, uh, we did not know what had happened in that selection committee meeting. It, uh, apparently, out of the five selectors, three were in favor of Sachin Bhoi, and the remaining two were a little apprehensive. You know, what, what would happen to 16 year old guy, green wickets? What will happen to his confidence if he fails against such a strong team? And I think very recently, just before that, we had a couple of teenage prodigies that's fading away. Fading. Actually, to be very honest with you at that time, the man who really took the initiative was Raj Singh. Raj, if you happen to know about him, is a former Maharaja Dungar to state in Rajasthan. A fascinating character. And he played cricket for Central Zone and Rajasthan in a station in Mumbai. Is what we call Mr. Cricket, actually. Yes, yes. This gentleman, when he saw such a, he realized that this man can only play just with nothing else. <laughs> and such a was just 16. And if I'm not missing, Narit Tamhane was the Peso select. Yes, yes. So Narit Tamhane, how could be easily convinced when Narit saw such a from a close distance? And naturally, Rajbhai being Rajbhai, if he had said something, no one would say no to it. Because he is such a sensible person and he would not have any vested interest at all. So he was the person, I personally believe, who was actually singularly responsible and he, he was the chairman of Select. And he was the chairman of Select. Yes. So Raj Bhai, we should give him the full credit because, and earlier if you recollect, it was like a Dilly Beg Sarkar, yes. of the character, who brought him into the team. Which I liked about your book is you have mentioned all these things in detail. You know, normally, People would forget the early days, but Sachin never did. Like, say, he has never forgotten his coach, Achreka, which is quite unusual by Indian standards, I can tell you. Because the Indian system is whoever is your next coach becomes your best coach. That is the Indian system. Sachin has been an exception, so is Rahul Dravid. Rahul has always mentioned Tarakur was my coach, and he was my only coach, and so did Sachin. We have had test cricketers who actually believe they became test cricketers. They had their coaches, they had the best coaches after they became test cricketers. And this is a very unfortunate part. People seem to forget their primary school teachers who actually lay the foundation. This is a very typical habit in Indian sport. And unfortunately, the media also accepts it, which is the most unfortunate part. So, but Sachin being Sachin and Dravid again, my favorite cricketer for all angles. Actually, these are the two exceptional gentlemen. They have made us proud, you know. And I'm so happy that you brought both of them into the picture, along with Sunil, of course. The idea is these are the platforms that Indian cricket, you know, the superstructure grows. Unless you have a solid foundation, the superstructure can never grow. And this is where Indian cricket is today.
because of people we go back 1930s, nine, and still early, yes. which to try to make it clear. But thankfully, you kept it at such an old way. But I think your next book should be on the history of Indian cricket. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> but actually, if you if you look at it, I mean, uh, uh, again, as I said a little while back, uh, when you are writing on a cricketer, yes. it's a team game. Absolutely. So you cannot write on an individual in isolation. Right. So I would like to believe that uh, this book, Hero, it is as much the story of Sachin as it is the story of Saurabh, Rahul, Sehwag, uh, Lakshman, all those who played with, yes. with him. All the, it is the story of Achyadar, yes. uh, it is the story of uh, Mumbai, Mumbai in many ways. It is the story of uh, a middle class Marathi family mm -hmm. that uh, in the in the mid 80s when uh, again uh, we did not have uh, liberalization, people were very conservative, there were about three or four careers which were considered the beginning and end of everything and anything that you uh, even contemplated which, which was not in sync with say medicine, engineering, law and chartered accountancy, I think that was pretty much it. So that was it, I think. Yeah. Everything else was frowned upon. And you have this situation where a college professor uh, receives a call from a coach and the coach tells him that, look, I think your son is very talented, he can go a long way, but his school does not have a cricket team, so I would suggest you shift him to the school that I coach. And this school is a few kilometers away. The, the school that the boy currently is going to is walking distance from his house. The boy will have to change two buses in the morning, early in the morning to reach that school. And a college professor, it would have been very easy for Professor Tendulkar to tell his son that look, all this cricket and all is fine. You can do that in your vacations, but you have to study, you know, get back. This is the only thing that we have. Make make use of it. But the family told this 11 year old boy, look, we are with you and if you think you can do it, we will support you. And that is I think in the 80s, I mean, it was an extraordinary thing. Thank you. You're right. In the 80s, I will not disagree entirely. But you have to accept, we had a brilliant man in 1970s, an outstanding scholar, Ajit Vatekar. Yes. Ajit Vatekar, in fact, Indian player has always done well when we had an academic at the top. It's amazing, actually. Ajit Vatekar had Max's algebra paper, I can tell you. And he's a brilliant in maths. But this gentleman went on to lead India. And I tell you, there's a first person in Indian cricket whom we have forgotten. When he led India, we defeated West Indies in West Indies, in England, in England. At that time, there was no test ranking as such. If there was any test ranking, India would have been ranked number one. Yes. Because England had just defeated Australia. Yes. So that was Ajit Wadeka's contribution. For all that, he is known as a lucky captain. I don't know what lucky means actually. A person does win in life, you he wins know. trophies for the country. And, and you, you cannot win two series on foreign soil without a single fast bowler. That's Unless you have something in you as a captain. He, in the Indian team of that time, did not have a... It seems unbelievable. Yes. Uh, now, am I, I related this incident only for one man. That is Sachin's dad. Must have thought if Ajit Wadegar can do it, so can Sachin. Yes. And the <laughs> is, academically, Sachin's family was no less. Yes. Right? And the, 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 the society where they lived, yes. it, was, it was called Sahitya Sava, which, which means like literary coexistence. And the, the government of Maharashtra had actually created that society for uh, you know pro, pro professors, poets, writers. So then they, Sachin grew up you know, rubbing shoulders with all these uh, literary geniuses. So it would have been very easy for his family to tell him that you, know, you play in the holidays and study. But uh, they just decided to back him. And then another thing that, we, that strikes everyone really is the contribution of his brother Ajit. If Ajit had not taken him to the coach, what would have happened to him in the This is it, what I was trying to mention. In fact, uh, this what we need to see here is we normally look at the top cricketers in our country, only the top few, forgetting the great support system yeah. that helps him to come up. And this is, these are, as we mentioned, Mr. Mayor, if I can write a book on those people who have done wonders for Indian cricket over the years. Actually, it's very essential because, to be honest with you, we are only worried about the top man. We are only you know, concerned about the number one person. And what about the family and the friends who have to go up the ladder? Why should we forget them, really? It's not and easy. In fact, Ajit, uh, uh, when Ajit first met Achyadar, sir, 
he had a look at Sachin in the nets and he told him that I think he's very young. You get him next year. And Ajit persisted. He said, just give him one more chance. So uh, Mumbai cricketers are called that word khadus is used to show that they are plucky and they are stubborn. So Ajit was was may not have played uh, cricket for Mumbai, but he was a college cricketer and he had that khadus quality. In him. So he persisted. He said, sir, just give him one more chance. And when he batted again in the nets. Asalikar sir liked what he saw. I think we have spoken enough. I think they should <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> cough up a few questions. What about it? Would you like to say something? Ask a few questions. Devendra is ready and yeah. willing. <laughs> Sachin has been blessed, I would say, starting with his parents, his elder brother Ajit, and then now uh, in, the, in subsequent years who had his wife, I think they have been solidly you know, backing him throughout. And that has enabled him to put things in perspective, take success and failure, you know, uh, with failure with a pinch of salt and move on. I think the family has played a, a very critical role in this regard. Well, as you just said that it took three years time to complete this book. I just need to know whether you had fallen back to any of your helpers, like any guidance from anybody or any tips from anybody to that company. Uh, my teachers were uh, people like Mr. Raju Mukherjee, his books, the books that he wrote, uh, Mr. Ramchandra Guha, uh, Harsha. Harsha has been, uh, uh, for my generation, he's been a kind of a role model. Uh, Mr. Gavaskar. When, when I wrote the book on Mr. Gavaskar, uh, it was a classic case of life coming full circle because not only did Mr. Gavaskar inspire me to play cricket, but he also inspired me to write because he was always a prolific writer. So BCCI wasn't very strict about players writing columns in the 80s. So, so uh, Mr. Gavaskar, so all these, you know, David Gower, uh, these were the people who inspired me to write, Ray Robinson. So they have a big role to play. So they were my teachers, and I, and I must admit that uh, when when I was writing both the book on Mr. Gavaskar and Sachin, I was looking at the, their entire careers. Rahul's book was written in 2005 when he was still at the halfway stage, and he, he went on to play cricket till 2012, as we remember. So I must must admit that when I wrote these two books on Mr. Gavaskar and Sachin, I had. Uh, Freedom at midnight at the back of my mind. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to give it, you know, some, the, the same kind of epic feel. You know, that it should be all encompassing. All the protagonists, all the characters, all the elements that uh, made the story should should be part of it and should get equal importance. So I tried to look at it holistically. But while writing the book, I did a lot of reference work. Uh, from my childhood, I had this habit of uh, collecting newspapers and especially the Sports Star magazine, another uh, another institution, Sports Star Sports Week. Uh, my parents were not very uh, thrilled with my habit of stacking them, but now I can, uh, you know, now now I tell my mother. Unfortunately, I lost my father last year, but now I tell my mother that all this was worth it. Or 
you know, stacks and stacks of sports stars. I did not have to travel to newspaper archives, no, I, I could do it at home. Thanks to the sports star and sports week connections. So there was a lot of reference work that I did. Asking uh, a question to both of you specifically. Now, in the age of um, animosity that, that, that we get to actually witness, you know, on Twitter, where just because India has laws, there's a whole lot of character assassination and people are um, trolling even the Indian captain. So, uh, you know, and uh, when you're talking about the era of uh, Sachin Tendulkar and uh, we're talking even uh, on our Pakistan counterparts, things were taken more in the sportsman spirit where things were much healthier and people used to attend each other's um, weddings and there's a, a lot more camaraderie and bond forming. However, you know, just because probably our side is lost and there's a whole lot, you know, slamming our Indian cricketers. So what is the future now with the new age trolling? Uh, how so do we see? How do we make it healthier? Yeah, yeah. If I may start, sure. sure. Ma'am, to be honest with you, we were far worse off. Okay. Far worse off. In 1974, when India did badly, stones were thrown at Ajit Vatipa's residence in Bombay. In 1996, at Calcutta, when we lost Sri Lanka, we lost because of default, because you know, bottles were thrown on the pitch. So we were quite immature at that time. To be honest, now we are taking it much in more in a mature manner. I'm certainly agree with this. Yes. And this is something, at that point of time, I personally thought we were not used to winning all that much. So any loss was a disaster. Now that we are used to winning at home and abroad, we can take a loss in a strike. This is a very temporary phase. Okay. Very temporary. I can assure you that. Okay. Yes. Question. Yes, sir. I have a question, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, though I'm not a huge fan of cricket, but I've come here to admire your writing and your intricacies which you know about this cricket world. I would like to ask you that our cricketers, people when they play, when they are on the ground, many times, as very rightly told by you, many times I have noticed that you know one week is down. I don't know from where. The second and the third and the so on. What's your take on that? Like, why the. Is it something that the morale should be boosted up even more or what? Well, like, I it, was so, it was so disappointing. I mean, a few days back when the match was happening, one week it down, two week it down, and then, you know, all, all was It becomes a pattern. I mean, like, one week it down. I just mean, it, it, uh, it was very, it was very sad feeling. I think uh, we should not forget the fact that we lost the final, that the, the final, that, that is something we should not, and uh, in fact we should we should not forget that the team that won the first two World Cups did not even qualify for this tournament. The teams that won the first two editions of the ICC Champions Trophy, which this tournament was, did not even qualify for the semi-finals. And the team that won the World Cup five times and the Champions Trophy two times also did not qualify for the semi-finals. India lost the final. It was admittedly a below par bowling performance. And I think, I personally think, I, 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 was, I became a fan of his when I first watched him in action in 2009. I think Mohammad Amir, uh, he's an extraordinary talent and those two dismissals, he uh, outwitted the batsmen and they turned out to be two of our best batsmen, Rohit and Virat, first up. And it is, I think it is one of those things, it's part and parcel of the game where, you know, sometimes you're just not good enough on the day in question. Uh, Mr. Mukherjee just mentioned uh, the, the 1974 series where, you know, stones were thrown at Ajit Vatikar's uh, residence. There was one test on that tour in which we were bowled out for 42, 42 all out. And the explanation given was that, look, the bowlers bowled five good balls, which got the top five batsmen out. And after that, there was no resistance. It can happen. It's, you know, sometimes you have to give credit to the bowling side. And I think Pakistan bowled very well there. First half. Uh, any more questions? So all good things come to an end. Thank you. Um, before we end, I would uh, like to request Mr. Thomas Sureka to please come and uh, hand over the token of appreciations to both our esteemed speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Please join us for tea and don't forget to take your signed copy yeah. of the such a great book.